Hi, welcome to our new tutorial for the Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro app. In this video, we will take a look at voicings, voice leading, and inversions. The inversions panel is located here at the bottom of the screen. Each inversion is represented by a specific shape which reflects the interval being played by the bass. The root position is represented by a circle and labeled R. It is also the default inversion. Right now, the root position is selected and it will be used for any function I choose to tap. C major in root position, F, B flat. All functions are played in root position. Let's say we want to play C major in first inversion. I tap on the triangle labeled 6, 5. The triangle, which has three sides, represents the bass playing the third of the chord. Notice the blinking line indicating the next inversion to be played. Let's try C major again. We now get a C major chord in first inversion. The symbol that shows the chord being played on the map has also changed to a triangle. This will be very useful when viewing or creating entire progressions containing inversions and also while playing audio tracks in audio mode. The triangle in the inversions panel is now enabled, meaning all chords will now be played in first inversion. Let's try the rest. I select second inversion, which is a pentagon labeled 6, 4, 3. It blinks. Choose the C chord again. There it is, second inversion. Let's try the third inversion. Bass plays the seventh of the chord. The shape is a heptagon labeled 4, 2. It's now blinking. Tap on C. There it is. Now, before I teach you how to use the pedal points, let me show you what this lock icon under the root position does. Let me choose a first inversion and lock it. So the next chord will be in first inversion. Let's tap on A minor. The chord has been played in first inversion. Notice how the line indicating the next chord is blinking over the root icon. The next inversion has been automatically set to root. So I play C major and it plays in root position. With the lock, the root will always be set automatically after any inversion has been chosen. By locking the root, you do not have to go back every time to set the root position after you've used other inversion. At the moment we are in root position and the lock is on, I will tap on C major. Okay, C major root position. I will tap on the pedal point icon, which is represented by an anchor labeled PED. The line is blinking. The next inversion is set to be a pedal point. I will tap on F. The F chord plays using C as the bass. In other words, a C pedal point has been created. That was G with a C on the bass. The pedal point will stay unchanged until you choose another inversion. Also, notice how the pedal point selection ignores the root lock entirely. I will try a few more chords which will all play using a C bass note. You can use pedal points for any function in any inversion. The bass will keep playing the same note until you decide to change the pedal point to any other inversion. Inversions are also shown in the chord info panel here. 
C major is in root position and the function is 1. If I play C in first inversion, the chord info now shows as a C over E. You can see the standard classical chord notation for the function in the functional view. Now, the current chord shows it as 1, 6. Let's try a third inversion 2 chord. The current chord shows it as 2, 4, 2. There are a couple of chords that will not allow inversions since their function is dependent on the inversion they are in. Here's the cadential 1, 6, 4. I will select root position and now tap on the C over G. The inversion has automatically changed to second inversion since this chord will only function as a cadential 6, 4. Although no other inversions are allowed in these functions, they of course accept any pedal point. Let's create a song using inversions. Let's change to recording mode. I will also activate the bass movement detector so we can view the bass lines being created. Let's insert a C chord in root position. There. Let's add the third inversion of the same chord. The chord staff panel shows C over B. The stepwise down icon has lit. Since the bass moves down a half step from C in root position to C in third inversion. Let's now add an F in first inversion. Bass will play an A. The bass detector has increased the counter of the stepwise down icon to a 2. Let's try adding a few more chords. D minor in root. D minor in third inversion. G in first inversion. Another nice bass line. Let's add a similar cadence, deceptively resolving this 5 chord with 6 minor. A minor, 3rd inversion. The 5 of the 5 in 1st inversion, which gives us an F sharp on the bass. And finally, a 1, 6, 4. To a 5 to the 1. Also pay attention to the bass lines we've created, which will be shown by the bass movement detector. Let's view the map in another key. Let's listen. Now in functional view, all functions in the staff panel now show the chords functionally and in their respective inversions. The 1, the 1 in 3rd inversion, which is a 1 major 4, 2, 4, 6, and so on. Here's the 5, 6, 5 of the 5, which was our D7 over F sharp. Also, if we turn on the paths, we can see all the chords involved in the progression and their respective inversions. Here's the 4 in the first inversion, the 2 minor 7 first in root and then in third inversion. And we can turn the path lines off for a less busy view. Finally, let's load an audio song from the server and view it in play on the map. 
All songs and performances included in this list are in the public domain. Let's load the wonderful and well-known main theme from Mozart's Symphony Number no. Forty. The key has now changed to G minor. Of course, you can view it in any other key if you want to. For example, in E flat. If you want to go back to the original key, just tap on this button here. Okay, we are back in G minor. The bass movement detector is on. So the app will display any bass lines it detects in real time. Please notice the high bass line content in this piece by looking at the counters for each bass line found as the song plays, which demonstrates that writing interesting bass lines is as important as writing beautiful melodies. Thanks for watching.